Okay, good morning. It's truly a pleasure to be here with all of you. Uh, I will talk about three issues. One is why osimertinib? Two, what are the new data we are presenting today? And three, how does this change practice? Now, EGFR mutations are seen in approximately 15 to 35 percent of patients with non-small cell lung cancer. And among those mutations, nearly 85 percent will be the two most common mutations, exon 19 or exon 21 mutations. For these patients, EGFR inhibition is the standard of care. Now, osimertinib is very different from all the other EGFR inhibitors for the following three reasons. One, it's highly selective to the mutated receptor and therefore has a much better safety profile compared to other drugs. Number two, it has higher penetration in the brain and therefore is able to produce responses in 70 to 90 percent of the patients with brain metastases which is a common problem for EGFR-mutated lung cancer. Three, it not only blocks exon 19 and exon 21, but it also blocks the T790M pathway, which is the most common resistance mechanism for patients treated with first and second generation EGFR inhibitors. For all these reasons, we conducted the FLORA study to compare osimertinib to erlotinib or gefitinib in EGFR-mutated patients. At this meeting two years ago, and then in the New England Journal of Medicine, we reported the primary endpoint, which was progression-free survival, that was improved from 10.2 months in the control group to 18.9 months for osimertinib group with a hazard ratio of 0.46. Today, we will be reporting the overall survival results of the FLORA study. And this slide summarizes the overall survival. Overall survival was a secondary endpoint in this trial. We will show today that osimertinib improves the overall survival for patients with EGFR mutated disease in a clinically and statistically significant manner. The median overall survival for patients treated with osimertinib is 38.6 months. For the control group, it was 31.8 months, and the hazard ratio is 0 0.799. I would like to point out here that the overall survival results you see for the control group in this study is among the highest reported for EGFR mutated patients. So that is because a lot of patients crossed over from the control group to receive osimertinib upon progression, and you see that. Even with that in play, we see a 6.8 month improvement in median survival with osimertinib. At the three year time point, the survival rate was 54% for osimertinib compared to 44% for patients in the control group. Now the study, as I mentioned, had survival as a secondary endpoint. It was not powered to look at survival each specific subgroup. The forest plot here shows that the survival benefit was seen across all key subgroups of the trial. We also conducted a global interaction test which confirmed that the benefit was distributed across all key subgroups. In the instance of the Asian versus non-Asian, the global interaction test showed, showed that the magnitude of benefit was greater in non-Asians compared to Asian. In order to understand that issue, I show you the survival curve for the Asian and the non-Asian group separately. Now, as you will see, in the Asian group, the curves separate early and remain favorable for osimertinib for 36 months. At the 36-month time point, I would urge caution as you interpret these results because the number of events are low and there is a high degree of censoring. To us, Benefit for osimertinib seem distributed across all key subgroups. So in conclusion, FLORA showed a statistically significant and clinically meaningful overall survival benefit in frontline treatment of patients with stage 4 EGFR mutated non-small cell lung cancer. The median overall survival was extended by 6.8 months. And I would point out that the osimertinib is the first tyrosine kinase inhibitor to show improvement in overall survival over another tyrosine kinase inhibitor in the treatment of advanced stage cancers. And at three-year time point, 28% of the patients are still on treatment with osimertinib compared to 9% in the control group. And finally, osimertinib presented a favorable and consistent toxicity profile despite the fact that the duration of exposure was almost two-fold higher for patients treated with osimertinib <coughs> compared to the control group. And in our mind, the final overall survival data with FLORA reinforces osimertinib as the standard of care for frontline treatment of patients with advanced stage non-small cell lung cancer that harbor an EGFR mutation. Thank you for your attention.
As you know, lung cancer is the most common, or one of the most common cancer in the world, and the killer, uh, killer cancer, the first cause of cancer death. Um, due to the different advance, we have the possibility to identify subset of patients in which we offer different options of treatment, particularly in patients with advanced disease. And in this particular setting, the setting of patients with EGFR mutation, is true that this was the first uh, predictive biomarker identified in this population. The number of patients with EGFR mutation varies according to, for instance, the region in Europe, in Caucasian population, is about 10-15% of patients, while in some uh, Asian countries, the prevalence is close to 40%. So the relevance of these data are different depending on the population you are treating usually, but uh, that they are really relevant. Um, we demonstrated several years ago that using an oral drug, an oral TKI in a state of chemotherapy offered better results, better outcomes for patients in terms of quality of life, response, duration of response, progression-free survival, and according to all the guidelines, the EGFR TKI are the standard of care. We have first generation agents, erlotinib and gefitinib, second generation agents, afatinib and dacomitinib, and a third generation agents, the, the newest one, osimertinib. And this study was focused on a face-to-face -face comparison between first generation versus third generation agents. The primary endpoint of the study was progression-free survival, as uh, Dr. Ramalingan uh, mentioned, and this uh, primary endpoint was met, the study was published, and osimertinib is already one option of treatment for patients in some countries in the first-line setting. But for clinicians, for patients, and also for our health authorities, the results in terms of overall survival are really relevant. And this is why this study is also important, knowing this secondary point from the statistical point of view. The study is, clean, is statistically significant and clinically relevant. It means that even having a longer exposition to the drug, no new safety uh, ad, uh, event has been shown that is relevant for our patient. And uh, according to the course, more than 50% of patients allocated to osimertinib are still alive at three years and this is clinically relevant. So uh, osimertinib demonstrated benefit in terms of progression-free survival, safety profile, very good safety profile, uh, good penetration, CNNs, and now more than six months of median survival time difference in comparison to the first line uh, generation AN. So these results are relevant. And the key point, apart from discussing the next step, how can we improve survival in coming years for this population that, of course, is really relevant for us. The key points are, firstly, we need to be sure that all patients are tested to look at the possibility of having a EGFR mutation. So biomarker test is clearly relevant. And of course, to be sure that we can, we can offer this kind of agent to, uh, to our patient. We need to be sure that we can offer TGIs and probably osimertinib as the best one in the first line setting. These are my comments. Thank you.